Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you all had a wonderful week. Um, I actually cannot believe how fast the weeks are going by. <laughs> it's crazy. So yeah, it is Sunday again. So I am here to do another reading for the Divine Soulmate Collective. Um, yeah, but before we get into that, I just want to make uh, a few quick announcements. So first of all, I will be posting the mid-June zodiacs for those of you who follow those. I know I haven't posted in like a month and I'm so sorry about that. Things were just really crazy. Um, but I am back for those and I'm excited to be posting those very, very soon. Um, number two, um, I made a community post last night just sharing a client's story with her cord cutting session with me. It was just like a, an extra little like side benefit where she was struggling a lot with her weight. And anyway, if you read the post, you'll understand. It was actually pretty interesting what ended up happening. So do check that out if you are interested. Um, also, if you would like to find out more information about cord cutting, if you have questions, because not everybody even knows what it is, feel free to email me. Um, you can find a lot of information online as well. And if you just go down like two posts, I've made another post where I explain more of what it, exactly it is that I offer in this session. Um, what else? Uh, number three, I appreciate any and all donations. Um, so just know that I appreciate you guys so, so much. And I thank you all, um, who have donated, even those of you who just leave, um, comments, liking my video, subscribing, it all helps me to keep this channel going. And of course, thank you to everybody who has been ordering personal readings with me. I appreciate you guys so, so much as well. So yeah, I think that is it. So today's reading is just going to be for Divine Soulmate Collective. We're not going to be looking specifically into any karmic situations. I do those every other week, okay? So that will be next Sunday. Um, and I will try, I know I always say this because <laughs> I always try um, to get at least like one extra video out sometime during the week. Hopefully, if time allows, we'll see. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at the masculine's energy and then we will also look at the feminine's energy as well as what might be coming up in the near future. So let's get started. We're going to start by getting some oracle cards for the masculines. Let's see what is going on. What is going on with the masculines currently, please? All right, we have Angel of Strength for their first card out. Okay, looks good. And this is definitely something that they are in much need of. Um, and I do feel like they are getting a lot of support um, from their spirit guides in terms of strength because this is something that they have been struggling with overall. Let's see what else. All right, and we have the blue moon, the unexpected. Okay, um, I'm getting here that the masculines are actually still struggling a lot with when it comes to strength. Um, they know that they need to pull on their strength. And what's interesting here is that I'm getting that there is something coming up for them. I feel like this may not have happened yet, but there is something coming up for them, which is actually going to force them to pull on that strength. Even if it doesn't have anything to do with their feminine on the surface, it, it's like it's going to be related to something else. But because they're going to be forced, so to speak, to pull on that strength, it's like then that strength, um, they find it and it stays with them and then they're able to apply it also in terms of their feminine. Um, so this is the message that I'm getting here, really interesting. For some of you, this, this may have already happened to some of the masculines. This might be something that they're going through right now or maybe has already occurred. And then for others of you, for most of you actually, I feel like it's an energy that is kind of like building, like it is coming up, something unexpected. And again, this is so that they can actually find that strength and then be able to apply it in terms of their feminine. So. For each of you, it's going to be different why it is that they need to pull on their strength. For some of them, it's a fear of commitment. For others, you know, they might be involved in another third party or karmic relationship. Um, it could be anything. For others, it's just a fear of the intensity, a fear of rejection, a fear of getting hurt, a fear of getting close, 
you know, whatever, um, an addiction, being workaholics, whatever. Um, but yeah, this is going to be something different. It's going to be something different, not related to the feminine, but it is related indirectly. All right, let's see what else. So what is going on? What else is going on with the masculines? All right, we have metamorphosis, third party, and deception. Okay, um, so I do get that this is a specific message for those of you where there is a third party involved. It does not have to be a partner, okay? You can even see in the image, it's a picture of a building, okay? So third party could be work. It could be, as I said before, an addiction. It can be just about anything. Um, so for those of them who do have some kind of um, a third party that is serving as a block to this connection, something is shifting. Something is shifting. I feel like that shift is already taking place. They're already in the process of making a shift in terms of that. Now we also have the deception card. And I feel like this is because whatever this third party is, um, it's like they're realizing that this third party has been a deception all along. And for some of them who already knew that, it's like, okay, yeah, it's time for me to make a shift here in terms of that. Um, so yeah, a little bit vague because everybody's situation is different. Um, if, it's a, if it's a relationship, for example, with a karmic partner, all right, this could be that there's deception within that relationship. And so this is coming up because even what, what's happening that's going to be unexpected, it might be in relation to that, to that third party. All right, the, now the unexpected event is going to take place regardless, okay, of whether there is a third party or not, all right? These are two separate messages, but for some of you, um, they could be related. Okay, so let's get into the tarot. Let's see what is happening here. See if we can get more specific. So let's see, what has been going on with the masculines? I forgot to mention that because this reading is general, of course it's not going to be everybody's situation. Okay, so do keep that in mind. Um, you can always book a personal reading to get more specific information for, for your situation, and you can find that information in the description box. Um, okay, so we only got one card to start with, and it is Temperance. Okay, so what I'm getting with this, and I will pull more, but I feel like there is a purpose why this came out on its own initially, is because the masculine has been insanely patient with something, um, whether it be a situation that they are stuck in, whether it be um, work, but just kind of like being very, very patient. And it's upright. I do, I do get that there is some good that is coming out of that. And I know that for most of you, you probably feel like, no, it's just procrastination or avoidance or denial. Um, and yes, that might be true. But what I'm seeing here is that there's something good that they're learning through that. Let me get a few more. Okay, we have the Three of Swords, the Chariot in Reverse, and the High Priestess. Okay. So what's been happening here is that they've been enduring some kind of pain. Um, kind of like just being patient with themselves through this pain. Um, again, it could be in regards to, you know, whatever it is that they don't have the strength to face. Whatever that is, it's causing pain and they've been allowing that 
to just keep happening, right? So they've been patient um, in this situation and really feeling the pain of it and staying there regardless of that pain, not moving away from it. But what I'm getting is with this high priestess, especially at the end here, I mean, I love that we start off with the temperance and then finish off with the high priestess, two very major cards, because this is the lesson here. Um, being able to see through this situation. And I feel like that's why, you know, we have here the metamorphosis and the deception, being able to see through something. Like the fact that they have stayed so long and enduring this pain in whatever situation they're in, even if it's just the fact that they're away from their feminine, okay, this that could definitely be, be it here. Um, that, that pain, it's like because it's been there so long, eventually they're, they're seeing through it, figuring out why they're feeling this pain and that it's not going to go away. It's not just going to go away on its own. They can't just wish the pain away. Like they actually have to take some kind of action. They have to pull on that strength. And like I said, that's why something unexpected is going to happen. Just have the nine of swords fall out as well. All right, let's, let's see what they're thinking. What's going on in their headspace concerning their connection with their feminine. of swords, the magician in reverse, and the six of cups. Well, there's definitely a lot of thinking. There's a lot of thinking and there's a lot of intense thinking. Um, for the most part, they're trying to think rationally. I feel like they're trying to rationalize their pain, almost like trying to rationalize it away um, because well, because they don't want to face it. They don't want to face having to pull on that strength. And again, I'm just, I feel like I'm just going to keep saying this over and over in this reading. That's why something unexpected is going to happen to force them to pull on that strength. Um, definitely, though, feeling um, a lot of nostalgia for their feminine. Um, again, a lot of thinking, but also just trying to rationalize it away. Almost like trying to manipulate their own, their own minds. And possibly being like a little bit stubborn with that. So for those of you who are in contact, you might, you might be picking up on this. This like, um, just trying to rationalize it away. Like, you know, everything's fine. Everything's good. But... Still, still missing you like crazy. Let's see what's going on with them emotionally. Okay, the five of wands, the four of wands, and the six of swords in reverse, and then the, the world card flew out kind of funny, um, but still came out. So emotionally, there's a lot of conflict. And again, I feel like it's because they're trying to um, go against their feelings at the moment because they're trying to rationalize. Um, they're feeling this connection with their feminine. They're feeling like, like you are their person. You give, it's like, interesting. You actually give them strength, even if you're not in communication. You are part of what gives them strength, but in a way where it's not obvious. But they still need to pull on that strength on their own. They're feeling like they cannot move away from this. With the Six of Swords being in reverse, but also um, they don't know how to avoid this conflict that they're feeling. They're trying to, as I said, they're trying to rationalize it away. Um, they're trying to just live with the pain and not do anything about it, but it's not going away. It's not going away and it's not going to go away. 
it almost feels like a vicious cycle, like just stuck in this loop. But again, it's okay. Um, as they're being patient through this, they're learning that they cannot just escape this pain. They can't just go away from it. So eventually they're going to have to do something about it. Like there is no leaving that conflict behind. There is no moving on from it. And that's why the world came out and it fell out funny because I feel like it's actually very important showing that this is moving towards a conclusion. They are learning that lesson. So <clears throat> yeah, some pretty major energies here, um, especially in terms of their, of their learning. Okay, so I don't know if we need to clarify anything at the moment. I'm just feeling guided to move on to the feminines and then we'll see. So let's see, feminines. And a lot of times we do get um, some pretty important messages for the feminines. Not always, but often. So let's see. I'm just stating that in case anybody like skips <laughs> this part, um, which is fine. It's fine, but you know, then if you find yourself only wanting to watch about the masculine, you know, sometimes it's good to ask ourselves why. And what would, what does that tell us about our attachment and our willingness to progress in our own selves? Let's see. But of course, this might not even resonate for all of you, as I said. All right, we have door to spirit. Okay. Let's see what else. What the feminines. You're definitely ascending. You're definitely moving forward in terms of spirituality. Yeah, look at this beauty. Being able to enjoy life, being able to see the beauty even in the most difficult of situations. Now that's not easy and you might not all feel like you're there. But what I'm getting here is that you're moving in that direction at the very least. Being able to just appreciate life with all of its difficulties, with all of its ups and downs. That door is opening up for you. And not only that, I'm getting with this beauty card, this is all about, also about self-love. And, you know, really being able to find that, like really finding that, not just telling yourself that, but like really, really feeling that. Let's see. Just a couple more for the feminines. Ooh, we have compromise. The answer is no and communication. Okay, really interesting because I was actually having a conversation with a friend today um, who's also involved in a divine um, soulmate connection here. And I feel like what I, what I was discussing with her, I feel like it's coming through here. So yeah, definitely could be something that a lot in the collective or many feminines in the, in the collective, oh my gosh, I can't talk, <laughs> um, need to hear at this, at this point in time. Again, take this message if it resonates, disregard it if it doesn't, okay? Um, so a lesson that the feminine is learning here or has been learning is about, okay, when do we compromise and when do we not compromise? When do we say no um, to a compromise? Yes, compromising is healthy in all relationships, right? As long as that is happening from both sides and not just one side. So more specifically for some of you, again, it doesn't have to be for all of you, this could be in terms of communication, right? Or in terms of meeting up um, or in terms of interacting. So are you always the one to initiate? Or if your masculine is initiati initiating, in what way are they initiating that contact, you know, and is it with respect? And where are, you, where are your boundaries? Like, how, where do they stand? Are they there? Do you need boundaries? Do you not need boundaries? Um, standards? 
and not in terms of, you know, playing hard to get or, you know, playing mind games. No, 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 that's not at all what we're talking about here. This is all about self-integrity. So learning about compromising and, you know, when being able to recognize and make that discernment of when the other person's behavior is okay, regardless of whether it's a divine masculine or a karmic or a friend or a family member or a colleague, whatever. It applies to all areas anyway. Um, but what happens is oftentimes when we are involved in these very deep and intense connections, it's so easy to lose sight of that because the longing for this connection, the longing for interaction is so strong. And the one thing that um, came through earlier when I was talking with her um, was that sometimes it can help to just think in our minds, you know, how would I react? How would I, um, yeah, how would I respond or react to this behavior from my masculine if it was from somebody that, yeah, I'm interested in them, but like I have no attachment? What would I have said? What would I have done then? And then once you recognize that, once you see that, that if there's a difference, you've already leveled up. You've, you've learned a lesson just by making that connection and recognizing it. So I'm not saying for you to do anything that you don't feel. Do not play mind games. Do not do things you know, as a means to an end. Um, or to manipulate the situation. No, like if you respond in a particular way, it has to be because you really do feel like you, you know, that that's coming from the inside of you, that you actually have that self-love and that self-integrity and you are reacting in that way, even if it makes you a little sad, because of that and not because you want to manipulate the situation in any way. And I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that divine feminines are manipulative, okay? So before anyone comments on that, that's not what I mean. We all manipulate situations subconsciously and, and not with bad intentions, okay? It's just human nature. So that's what I'm referring to. So, all right. Let's get a couple of tarot for the feminines and then we'll move on and see what is coming up. So, anything else for the feminines here? No, they're all upright. We have the Queen of Cups, the Magician, and the Six of Pentacles. All right, okay, so manifesting emotional balance here. Um, again, self love. Yes, you have love for your masculine. That's not going to go away. Your masculine also has love for you. That's not going to go away. You don't need to feel like, like you're walking on eggshells. And I do know that a lot of you are not even in um, contact with your masculine. So all of this that I've been talking about, you can apply that on an energetic level rather than on, you know, a 3D level if you're not in contact. Okay. Um, maybe I will do, if I get if I have time to do another um, reading within the week, I will do one that's specifically for no communication. Because um, I do feel like this reading is mostly, <clears throat> mostly for those of you who might be in some kind of communication, maybe semi-contact. Not limited to that yet, <laughs> okay? It's definitely also for those who are in no communication, but yeah, it'll be a good idea to do one just for no communication. Um, okay, so back to this. Self-love. And then also the love for your masculine and your masculine's love for you is there. You don't need to feel like you're walking on eggshells if you are interacting with them. Or even on an energetic basis, you know, like, oh, should I be thinking this way or should I be thinking that way or what energy am I putting out? No. If you do the work on the inside, then what you should be putting out is going to happen naturally. And that's the whole point. Otherwise, it's pointless. It defeats the purpose. Just because if, if we just act like we've evolved, if we just act like we've learned the lessons, 
that's not going to bring about any results. The whole point is for, for you know, that behavior to be natural because we've already learned the lesson. So just focusing on our own self. And again, one way to do that is just to be observant with your own self. Be observant of your thoughts. Be observant of your responses. Be observant of your feelings. Be observant. Make, make certain comparisons to help you make discernments about, you know, the attachment that you might be, you know, hanging on to. Just the mere fact of recognizing it is a big step forward. That's all you have to do. Okay, um, and that is how you manifest then that equal reciprocity, right? Queen of Cups, by being the Queen of Cups, you become the magician, the manifester of equal give and take. And of fair give and take. Not one-sided, not just one person compromising. So yeah, very specific message for the feminines this time around. Okay, let's let's see what is coming up for the masculines in the next week or two. What are they moving towards? have the hermit in reverse I think this one was next the wheel of fortune and the three of pentacles okay so it does feel like there's a shift in terms of their like holding back in terms of their self-isolation um for those who may have been going through a phase where they're like pulling back their energy from you because I do feel like that has been the case apparently um there's a shift. There's a shift and there's movement towards them being more um, collaborative with the feminine or just feeling more like, you know, the two of you can be more of a team. There being that teamwork, right, which is reminding me a little bit of what I was talking about, that even give and take and reciprocity. So things are definitely shifting. Um, I feel like they, they feel like, you know, they may have been unfair in that department as in, you know, holding back, um, not possibly not being very interactive or responsive or expressive or I don't know. Um, that's shifting. I, not much. It's not like something crazy, but it is shifting. That wheel is turning in a more positive direction. Um, I don't think we need anything else for the feminines. I feel like that was just like <laughs> so much. Let me just get a few oracle cards to close out the reading. Let's see. All right, we have two here. We have Never Ending Story and Between Worlds. Yeah, I feel like the never ending story is this patience um, <laughs> that the masculines have been showing. Again, it is leading to a result. It is helping them to gain more insight into their own behaviors. I actually feel like there's some mirroring here between the masculine and the feminine in that, in that regard. Um, yeah, maybe I'll save that for for another time because I feel like we're just going to go really deep into like another like thing here. Um, but yeah, with the between worlds card being right after this never ending story, it's like that cycle that, <laughs> that they're stuck in that I was talking about before. Remember when I said it's like a vicious cycle or something, they're coming out of that. They're coming out of that. Not fully, right? They have one, one foot behind and then the other foot forward. So one in the dark and one in the light. So they're between worlds. They're in that process of moving out of that cycle, right? That's why we have this Wheel of Fortune, as I said, making that shift, especially in terms of, okay, you know what? If we're not in communication, we can at least have a friendship to start with or something, some kind of interaction here. Maybe, you know, work together um, if you're colleagues or just anything. Okay, so between worlds in that, in that aspect. Let's just get one more. So, final message. 
I just need to use for those that this resonated with. And we have the mutable moon. Nothing is yet set in stone. Interesting. Um, certain things are, but there's always free will. And maybe that is also something that, you know, we always need to, to remember. And I feel like, you know, particularly for those of you that feel like, you know, this is done, you know, the masculine has just decided um, that, you know, they're just not going to come around or... I don't know, whatever it is that might be happening in your situation. No, that's not set in stone. We don't know where this is heading. All right. But because if it is a divine soulmate connection, you will always be pulled towards one another and the universe will always be um, supporting both the feminine and the masculine in terms of learning their lessons in order for you to be together if that is what is meant okay so if it feels like it's done no it's that's not set in stone and i think manix came here to tell me that he agrees and yeah so unless just not forget i just want to um, remind everybody something unexpected is happening for the masculines which is going to force them to pull on that strength so that is it for this time i thank you guys so so much for watching and i will talk to you guys soon much love